I promise you that the Promise Library is one of the most useful Roblox libraries you can get your hands on. So in this video, I'll be showing you three separate examples of using promises in an actual Roblox game scenario. Because promises are used a lot in web development. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. But a lot of times, like when I first started out, I heard about that and I'm like, how can I use promises for Roblox? There's a really nice library. I just didn't really know how to use it. Over time, I figured out the best, not the best ways, but some of the good ways to use promises. I'm still learning. We're all still learning. But in this video, I'll show you some tips that I've learned on where to use promises and how to make your code more secure, more readable, and more expandable. So like the video if you enjoy it, subscribe for more Roblox scripting content, and put any other libraries you want me to explain or make a video on in the description too. But without further ado, let's get into the video. The easiest way to install and get the Promise library up and running is to go to the GitHub repository, which I will have linked in the description, and go to the releases, and then go download the promise.lua and just copy the contents of that into a file in Roblox Studio, which I have already done. So here's the Promise library. It's a nice, simple one module script. So let's get to using it. So I have here a pretty simple setup. We have a part parented to a model with the model's primary part set to this part. So imagine this to be like a car or something in an actual game. So in this script, we're basically waiting a couple of seconds and then changing some aspect of our model. In this case, we're accessing the primary part and we're accessing the brick, brick color and we're changing it after five seconds. And this code works as you might think. Waits a couple of seconds, the color changes. But what if something happens, let's say our car has health or something and it gets destroyed while it's in the process of changing its color for some reason or another. So let's just implement that. So we wait a couple of seconds and then we say model destroy. If we wait a couple of seconds, it gets destroyed. And then what happens when you change the color? Oh, look at that. It errors. So what's happening is it's trying to access the primary part, but the primary part doesn't exist. So, I mean, you could technically get around this by, like, saying, like, getting a reference to the primary part before it's destroyed, but that's still just a band-aid on the greater problem, and that this thing still runs, keeps on running, after the death of the part. That really shouldn't be the case. And, obviously, we could say if model that primary part after this, but that's just a lot of extra code for something that really should be guaranteed when we're running this statement. Luckily, promises have a solution for that. So let's get the promise module. I'm saying Google promise equals require game get service replicated storage dot promise. And now we can convert this statement here into a promise by saying local promise equals promise dot delay. Delay it by five seconds. And then we can call it and then function, whatever. So, and we can put this in here. And indent it. So, this promise.delay is sort of the equivalent of the task.delay, except for the fact that we can cancel this delay. So, what that means is that when we no longer need to run this promise, promise we can just stop it from running. And so, when the primary part or the model gets destroyed, we don't need to run this anymore. So all we got to do is say model dot primary part dot destroying connect a function that all it says is the promise cancel. So it'll cancel the promise when it's destroying so we don't call this and get the error. And even if we don't get errors when we call this, we shouldn't be calling a statement when the model itself doesn't exist, especially if we're changing some state in the process. Like let's say this was a delay to, I don't know, get like a recharge or get extra money or something like that. You don't want that to happen when really it shouldn't happen. So let's see what happened. So it gets destroyed and it gets completely stopped. The statement never runs because the promise is canceled. 
So this is a very bare bones and basic example of when you can use promises, just when you're using a delay and you don't want to use this. And one other thing is if you use like a Trove made or janitor module, which is a good cleanup module, and make sure to comment if you want a video on that, you can give promises to those modules to clean up on their own. So when you have a giant Trove for a part or a like vehicle or whatever, when the Trove cleans up, the promises will all get canceled. So if you have any uh, ongoing events or like waits going on, it'll just get canceled. And this makes you feel a lot more secure in your delays and your waits. Because in games, I mean, you always want to prioritize using events. But in Roblox, it's kind of kind of iffy with that sort of thing. So you, sometimes you have to just use delays. And promises give you a really nice way to do that. So the next example is one for those who make like round-based games you're all too familiar with, which I've almost exclusively made round-based games in my time on Roblox. So you have your main game loop, like the wall true do loop that runs forever and ever and ever and ever. Except it doesn't, because if an error happens, this whole entire thing breaks. So this is just simulating an actual like game where you start with the intermission, it takes like three seconds, probably take more in a real game, but whatever. We play the game and we clean up. So, you know, if you run this, it obviously runs as you would expect. Nothing fancy there. But what happens if, you know, just by some chance, some error occurs in the game playing stage? Because us devs, we're not perfect. Stuff happens. So if we call, if we error, just say something went wrong. This could be like a part gets destroyed when you don't expect it. Or... Or something else happens, you know, you never know. So, you can actually, actually see the linter's already saying, warning us, unreachable code, previous statement always errors. That's kind of funny. So, when we run this, we get the intermission, we get the game playing, but then it errors. And notice there's no cleanup. And the loop doesn't even continue. So, if an error happens on your main, like, wall true do, it completely breaks your entire game the only way for it to reset is to do a like server reset and since we're using lua and lua has a ton of runtime errors instead of compile time errors you could have a tiny little bug that could mess up your entire game without you knowing it and your players could just realize that the entire thing's broken and people might stop playing your game again promises come to the rescue because a local promise equals require game get service replicated storage dot promise so using promise dot delay the stuff that we did earlier we can do the same exact idea so we can first after the print intermission we can do promise dot delay three seconds and then we can use and then with a function to go into the game playing stage so we'll delay it three seconds, we'll go into the game playing stage, and then what we can do is we can do another statement, and then say, and then call promise.delay with five seconds. And let me actually get rid of this error, and get rid of this. And we finally, and we can just call finally, a function that prints cleanup and then we can make a quick little delay once again so you don't have to understand the exact semantics of all of these functions that I'm using you just have to understand the gist because anyone can understand this but you have to understand how it's useful and why it's useful so as a brief overview, where we still have this more normal print, then we're delaying it three seconds, and then we're printing game playing, and and then call is just syntax sugar for saying, and then and then function return promise dot delay five. So it's basically putting a delay in the promise chain, and then finally we're gonna print cleanup. So this finally will run regardless of any of of any of these go correctly. You know so. The reason this is useful is because like you can chain promises and the promises, the errors propagate all the way down. So actually, just to demonstrate that, 
I can put a catch block at the end that has a function with the air, and we can print or warn the air. So let's say, once again, the game playing airs. Actually, let's demonstrate that this run, runs properly first. But quickly, before we test, promises don't yield, meaning this doesn't wait to finish. So if we called wall true do, it would keep on running, running, running infinitely, and it wouldn't go too well. So what we can do is just add a wait at the end. And now a wait technically returns a couple of values, but we don't really have to worry about that since this block is self-contained. So now let's run this. So you see intermission started, and then the game's playing. And I wait a couple more seconds, and the cleanup happens. And it repeats again and again. And notice how this catch block didn't call because this only runs when an error happens. So now let's again simulate an error occurring. We can say, just oops, you know, like something went wrong again. So let's play this. See intermission, the game playing, and then we see the promise has the error. But notice how the cleanup still happens. And notice how, how it keeps on running, even though the promise errs. So in an actual game, if you have some freak accident happen, the game would continue running just normally. And you have a really, really nice warning that tells you exactly where stuff is. Which, this is unusual to asynchronous operations in Roblox, because normally with coroutines, the stack is a little messy, and it just doesn't look too good. And we're catching this error and warning it, and that's where this warn is coming from. You see right here. So if we want, we can handle this error differently. You can upload it to like an analytics service. But, and also, you don't have any messy P calls lying around. It's all a self-contained loop. So this is supposed to demonstrate promise chaining, where you can add promises again and again onto each other because each of these promise functions returns other functions. Promises are known to be composable. You can compose multiple and you can figure it all out. And honestly, if you don't understand the actual semantics of each of these functions, Promise has a very good documentation page where you can look at it and understand it pretty quickly. So one final example of the use of promises, it's probably the more most stereotypical one, where you're wrapping a current Roblox API in a promise to be used in your code. So I'm going to use tween service for my demonstration, but you can use, honestly, a lot of Roblox APIs that, that yield, or in order to use properly, you need to yield it eventually. So let's just do that. So we're going to do local tween service equals game get service tween service. Then we're going to say local promise equals require game get service replicated storage dot promise. And then normally with a tween, you use tween service create and you send in the object the tween info and the props. But for now, we're going to make a wrapper function. So local function tween that takes in the object, the tween info, and the props. And then what we can do is return a promise dot new that has a function, which is the executor. And the function takes three parameters, a resolve callback, a reject callback, and an on cancel callback. So what this does is basically when when the promise is created, we can either resolve with a value, that's like the success, reject it, which is like the error or the failure, and to cancel it, which is what I demonstrated in that first example. So we can say local tween equals tween service create. We can create it using the the using the object, the tween info and the props we were given in the top. We can say if on cancel with a function tween cancel, 
then we return. So basically, if the function's canceled, we cancel the tween, and then we return. But otherwise, after that, we can just say tween dot completed connect resolve. And then we can play the tween. So what this will do is basically, if the tween is canceled, if the promise is canceled that has a tween, we cancel the tween. And then we just return so the tween like doesn't get played or whatever. And then we connect the completion of the tween to resolve. So once the tween is done, the promise resolves and returns back to the beginning. So we can start this by saying, you know, like we can tween a, let's just make a part. Let's make a part. Let's anchor it. We can tween the workspace dot part. Make a tween info dot new. Uh, we can just put in one for the time and just leave everything else blank. And then for the props, we can just say position equals vector three dot zero. So it'll tween towards the origin. And then once it's done, we can do it. And then function print done once it's done. So we play this. And it tweened quite quickly, but it did, in fact, make it towards the center. And then if we made this take longer, like 10 seconds or something, we can do task.wait, like 3 seconds, and then we can cancel the tween. So we say local promise equals tween, whatever. We can task.wait, 3, then we can do promise, cancel, if something adverse were to happen. So it's going, it's going, it's going. It cancels, it stops. And obviously, you, you could call tween cancel here, but wrapping everything in a promise allows you to also change. So you, you'd be able to change tweens. You could do like, and then tween again, and then tween again, and finally, you could like reset it back to the position. So in the end, promises aren't that, so like that silver bullet that's going to solve all of your issues it just makes your code feel a lot more legitimate in my opinion it feels a lot more secure and it leads to a lot of neat little code like reuse practices and code neat ability practices where you can make your code neater make it more readable while also making it more secure so that's about it for this video. This video didn't quite go over the exact semantics of promises, but there's documentation for that. And the documentation does a great job of explaining the API and some of the use cases, but it uses a lot of words and it has a lot of jargon and it makes it seem like promises are only for the, like, the elite Roblox devs who know everything about everything. Whereas, honestly, I've come to learn that promises can be used by anyone as long as you know when they can be used. Because they're used a lot in the web development world. And they're touted on this like this high mountain, you know, how good they are, whatever. But a lot of times the use in the web dev world is not the same as in Roblox. But sometimes there's overlap like in API calls or whatever that like that to servers. But in the end, promises are useful. You should use them. So I'll have some links, useful links in the description if you want to learn more. But Hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.